Brady Barkey has been the official director of athletics for Southeast Missouri State University since 2016. In that time, SEMO has seen unprecedented success. They've won 20 OVC championships since 2019, most recently men's basketball. SEMO student athletes have also set records academically, achieving their highest departmental GPA in the last seven years. Brady? That's a mouthful. <laughs> That's a big introduction. It is. Well, thank you for that. Uh, lots of lots of great memories and lots of great moments for uh, our student athletes and our university, our community. So, uh, since 2016, you've been uh, running the show at the uh, athletic department, but you've been with SEMO for for a while now. Yeah, I've actually been since 2008. Uh, my wife and I came here, and um, you know, I've kind of had the opportunity to move on to some different responsibilities, and since 2000. 2015 and 2016 permanently been able to lead the athletics department and um, feel like we've had the opportunity to do some some really special things during that time and hopefully many more to come. So was that always kind of a an end goal for you to be ahead of a athletic department? You know, still days I, I wonder what I want to do when I grow <laughs> up. Uh, it wasn't really the, the goal. As a matter of fact, I think I told my wife three to five years and we'd move on. But um, we really kind of fell in love with Cape Girardeau and the community and we've had three children and we've been raising our family here and it's it's been a great place to call home. And you mentioned that you are an SIU graduate. So I graduated from law school from S uh, okay. at SIU, okay. and uh, I did my undergraduate work in uh, uh, St. Louis at Webster University. I had an opportunity to play basketball and golf there, uh, and then I earned my MBA from here at SEMO. So yeah, uh, lifelong learner, I guess. So as we mentioned in the in the intro, um, and, and we can't glaze over this, 20 OVC championships since 2019. Um, you know, you hear it, you know, people want to support a winning uh, program, and I'm not certain how it gets any more winning than 20 titles since 2019. Yeah, and you know, what's really cool about that is it's not just a couple of our programs. Every one of our sports programs have actually won a championship in that time. And so um, to have that across the board is really neat. Um, but as you think about our student athletes, one of the things we tell them uh, when they come here is that we want them to walk across the stage, uh, receive their college diploma, with a championship ring on their fingers. Mm. And for the last several years, virtually all of them have had the opportunity to do that. And that's, that's a, a really neat thing. Yeah, that's, that's a, an amazing visual. Yeah. Um, so what, what would you, you know, obviously I know you, you, you lead the department, uh, what do you attribute to the success? You know, to me, I think it all starts with people. Um, we have been really fortunate to uh, not only have some really talented and dedicated staff, uh, but our coaches that we have. Um, you know, people that have chosen to make a career developing young people through sport. And um, I mean, again, that's one of those stats where almost every one of our coaches have had an opportunity to win Coach of the Year and be recognized as you know the best coach in their sport in our league. Sure. And uh, and what's really need is that we've retained all of them. And so uh, having the, the continuity, the ability to continue to build on something. Um, and so it's been, a, it's been a process. It's been something that has been building for several years. Um, and you know, they say iron sharpens iron. And, and I think that's what we've seen. I think we've seen a lot of coaches um, that have really kind of gotten around the table with each other and talked about how they've done it and, and you know, developed one another. And it's a special culture that I think we have right now. And I think that's where it all starts. You mentioned that that retention. You know, we look at some of your coaches that you have that have been here uh, for several years now. Um, there's something special that that makes them stay. Yeah, and I mean, I think certainly part of it is the community. I think, um, you know, at least I hope part of it is that they understand that that you know we haven't reached our ceiling. We have an opportunity to continue to you know build upon what we've been able to do. And um, so now you're not just talking about winning those conferences championships we mentioned but now you're talking about what can you do in an NCAA tournament 
and you know can you have an opportunity to be a Cinderella story in you know in the NCAA basketball tournament or can you have an opportunity to be a top seed in the football playoffs or you know those types of things and people see that you know there's more still to be accomplished here and, um, and that's neat when you know that you haven't reached your full potential yet. I know part of that is community buy-in, community support to facilities and, and that sort of thing. And as I drove down Broadway today, uh, there was a lot of construction. It seems busier than ever at Hawk Stadium. I know it's a big, big project on your plate right now. Yeah, it's a huge project. And, and I think, you know, to, to your comment, it takes everybody. Um, you know, more so now than ever in college athletics, this arms race um, of, facilities and you know name image likeness and and just resource um, development I think has to be as great as it's as it's ever been and and I think it takes the community it takes people willing to step up and say hey we want to continue this momentum and, and create something and the how project is kind of the start of that um, I think that's going to be something that's going to develop us for the next you know 50 years and it's a big undertaking we're just really in the first phase of it um, but you know by this fall people are going to see something new that they haven't seen in almost a hundred years at Hauk and then how do we take that momentum and build on it to create something different um, you know for the future too and so it's an exciting time there's no better time to be a Red Hawk and, and to be a supporter and um, just privileged to have the opportunity to lead the department. I have just a, a minute or so left so quick glimpse what will that that phase one finished product look like? Yeah, you know, we're going to have about 4,000 seats added back into the stadium, and so that entire south side will be rebuilt. We'll have a new entrance, handicap accessibility for people to be able to get in and out, uh, new concessions, new restrooms. Apparently, restrooms are a really exciting thing. People want to, <laughs> you know, have uh, great amenities, and so, um, and then we're going to replace the turf um, and uh, have a new playing surface this fall when people uh, come in. They'll see that completely refreshed and and so uh, it should be a lot of fun when we open up in September um, at, at home. So you mentioned uh, football I know but obviously soccer team plays there as well yep. uh, so it's going to be a new facility for a couple different teams. Yeah and I think we'll actually be able to do kind of a, an, a grand opening for both of them and when soccer gets a chance to, to have their first one they'll get to, to open it and then we'll do the same again with football and so it should be a lot of fun come this fall uh, as people get to come in and, and see that for themselves for the first time.